Let's take a second to break down the Lions offense after that San Fran game. Let's Talk Lions. Welcome back to an all new episode here at Let's Talk Lions. My name is Jay. Thank you for hanging out today. Hey, if you didn't know, you can buy one of these hats in the link in the description. So the Lions did just lose their home opener to San Francisco just the other day. And really, I wanted to take some time, break down what we saw offensively, break down some of what we saw defensively. And I decided to split it up into two videos just because there is so much to talk about. So today, we're going to break down the offense. For the first time in 12 years, Matt Stafford was not QB1 for the Lions. He did not run out of the tunnel for Detroit, but in fact, Jared Goff did. We got our first look at Anthony Lynn's offense, the ground attack, the air attack, everything that we have been waiting to see, we finally got a glimpse of. I'm not going to lie, I really liked a lot of what we saw. Yes, we got behind way too early. We left way too many points out on the field early in the game. We got behind. However, I think there's a lot of good that we're able to glean from this game. For 12 years, watching a Lions game was like watching a Disney sing-along. You knew every word. You knew all the verses. You knew the dances and the motions that went to it. You just knew what was going to happen. And for the first time in a very long time, I felt like we watched an unscripted version of the Detroit Lions, and it was beautiful. It was so good not to know exactly how everything was going to happen, that we would be down, and then in the fourth quarter, that's when the game would get good, and that's when Stafford would do it, run the two-minute drill. It was super nice to be able to sit back and be like, this is an unscripted version. Now look, we should never have been down as much as we were as early as we were. But it is what it is. We were getting clapped. But I love the fire that came within the Detroit Lions, especially out of the second half. When they went in there at that halftime, there was a choice. They could have either just said, ah, forget it. We did. We tried. This whole new regime thing didn't work. The new culture shit. No, there is a definite culture shift because when these guys came out at halftime, they had a different way about them. In the beginning, there was a lot of jitters. You saw those jitters from Goff in the first drive, in the second drive. But then over time, they really began to work it out, to smooth it out. This offense is seemingly much more aggressive and effective on the ground. But before we get to the ground game, let's look at the air game. Goff threw a total of 57 passes. That's right, 57. Never did I expect Goff to throw the ball that much in general, but not in the home opener, not against San Francisco. Did not see that coming. Goff was 38 for 57, so about a 66% completion percentage. He threw for 338 yards, three TDs, one interception, and he had a passer rating of about a 92. Now, really, when you look at his targets, who was he mostly going for? It was Hawkinson, Williams, and Swift, just like we all anticipated. I think that was one major area where we thought that's where the ball is going. It's going to Hawk or it's going to the running back. In the air, Hawkinson was 8 for 10 with 97 yards. Swift was 8 for 11 with 65 yards. And Williams was 8 for 9 with 56 yards. The air attack between these three was dangerous there were a few plays that really if swift didn't get hit in the face like the one time he goes to catch the ball goes through his hands hits him in the face there were some open field plays that could have been even more dangerous that could have accounted for even more but in the end when you really watch the way that the game played out in the first quarter first drive goff was antsy he was jittery he looked like he was a new qb in a new city trying to figure it out. Coming into the second half, specifically in the fourth quarter, which is too late. However, coming into that second half, Goff really found his footing. That's when it seemed like he calmed down when he got a hold of himself, got grips, started airing the ball out, and was building in confidence. Quite frankly, watching Goff did not expect him to throw as many times as he did. Yeah, the completion percentage was a little bit less than we would hope for, 66%, not great. However, he did find Hawkinson, he found Williams, he found Swift multiple, multiple times. The completion percentage between those guys specifically was great. And that is exciting, knowing that he has that as an option, especially with a wide receiver core that 
Well, people are calling nobodies. But before we get there, a message from our sponsor. If you're looking to get an advantage over your sports book this season, download BetQL from your App Store or Google Play Store. Their best bets computer model scans over 350,000 unique bets per year to give you the best betting recommendation for each game, and they give you solid reasons why you should. They cover everything from spreads, over-unders, and player prop bets. And if you're more of a lone wolf like White Fang, when it comes to researching, BetQL has a ton of different tools for your own betting research. I'm talking sharp data, line movement, team summaries, lineup and injury news, you name it. Click the link in the description and by doing so, enter the word LIONS as a discount code during checkout and you get 25% off your betting subscription. In fact, if you check out their BetMGM offer, you get a free year of BetQL. You have to use this link to redeem that offer. Check out their sports book offer page to claim free offers upon signing up at one of the many sports books listed. You can find all this information in the description of this video. It's a great chance to beat your sports books this year. Look, a lot of people look at our wide receivers and they're calling them nobodies. They don't believe in this wide receiver core. And when you look at Goff airing it out, he mostly did air the ball out to our running backs and to Hawkinson. However, upon finding the wide receivers, look at Khalif Raymond. Raymond went three for four, 50 yards total, an average of about 16 yards per reception. St. Brown, two for four, 22 yards. Cephas, three for seven, 12 yards. And Benson, three for six, 19 yards. Really, it does shuffle down low, 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 lower. Sure, they were not targeted as much as our running backs or a tight end, but I don't think anybody even thought they would be. And so seeing them, seeing a guy like specifically Khalif Raymond, be able to pick the ball up, be able to move where he could into the center of the field, shifty, speedy, twitchy, loved Raymond out there. I think that he is going to have a big impact on this wide receiver core. Now stepping away from the air attack, an area that I think we were phenomenal was the run game. But the run game couldn't have been successful without our O-line absolutely killing it. So we do have to talk about that. Listen, Taylor Decker goes down with the hand injury, gets surgery, is out for four to six weeks most likely. With that being said, Penny Sewell steps up into the left tackle position. He took reps all week getting prepared for it. And for him to go up against Nick Bosa in the opening game for him, as an NFL debut, hey, he held Bosa back. Sewell played phenomenally. You look at the way that he was able to hold Bosa behind the line, not and really giving him extra shoves after he would come in and the play would be almost over. Sewell was worth that pick. He was vital for the Lions to pick up, especially at this point. With Taylor Decker being down, I saw Matt Nelson at the right tackle position let D Ford come in a few times. Don't get me wrong, there were a few moments, a few blips of error. However, Sewell went out there and said, I'm going to win every rep. I'm going to fight for every battle. And he did. He fought and he fought valiantly. I think Sewell played phenomenally. As a whole, our O-line played phenomenally. Our O-line allowed for an excellent run game. And that's something that has not been in Detroit for quite some time. Jamal Williams, in the words of Campbell, is our rock. That's what Campbell said after in the press conference. He said, Jamal Williams is our rock. He's the guy. He took the RB1 reps. He was out there taking the majority of the reps. You look at his stats. Williams had nine attempts. He had 54 yards, six yards a carry, and one TD when it really mattered. Williams was phenomenal watching him break through the line over and over again watching the o-line create holes and then him being able to weave through them he put up a total of 110 yards rushing and receiving his vision was beautiful he found the holes and he made the moves god i love that we brought williams here without him we don't have that one two punch between him and swift a beautiful one two punch and one of the best things was his press conference after when he said i was just having fun that is so huge, and it's such a culture shift for Detroit. Now, DeAndre Swift had a little bit less production than Williams. Williams absolutely led the team. Rushing was phenomenal, but DeAndre Swift had some pretty good stats, too. Swift had 11 attempts for 39 yards. 
but he was much more effective in the air rather than on the ground. Offensively, when I look over our game, when I look over this entirety of the game, I mean, there were plays that we left too much out on the field. Jason Kambinda dropping the ball. DeAndre Swift dropping the ball, getting hit in the face. Wide receivers, couple penalties that pulled us back multiple times. We left too much out on the field. We started out jittery, started out antsy. It seemed like we had a little bit too much pressure. And then the guys came out. And the thing I love the most offensively is we never stopped fighting all the way to the very, very end. The Lions coming back, fighting tooth and nail, clawing for every single point that they put up on the board. It was amazing and it shows the huge culture shift that Dan Campbell, that this coaching staff is bringing to Detroit, has brought to Detroit. But in the end, offensively, we left way too many points out on the field, especially in that first half. We couldn't convert on that fourth and one early. We then get the ball back on the fumble. We can't get a TD there, miss a field goal. There were just way too many sloppy errors early in this game. I love the fight. I love the grit. I love that these guys didn't stop until the last whistle blew. But one thing that I think we learned is this growing, this developing, this young roster can't go down by that big of a margin of points that early in the game because then you're just clawing from behind and that's not the position that you want to be in we have to put up points and we got to put them up early I think when I look at this game there is a lot more to cover defensively than there is offensively on the offensive side of the ball we saw that the O-line played phenomenally that our run game was strong that Goff to Swift Williams Hawkinson was there and that we have a lot of work to do with the wide receivers can't get those penalties, which kind of pulled us back. And we really have to convert. We have to score off the bat. We cannot be going into these games in the back half because, hey, we got Green Bay coming up this week. And if we're trying to claw back in the fourth quarter, it's not going to happen. Drop your thoughts in the comments. What were you most impressed by offensively? Drop it in there. You know I look forward to reading it. And hey, what were you maybe most discouraged by offensively? Drop it in there. would love to discuss with you as always. Stay tuned for the defensive side of the ball. We'll get it. And as always, I'll catch you next time on Let's Talk Lions.